The purpose of this video is to help you find your way through the P-Valley Challenge. If you don't know where to start, this video is right for you. I'll introduce three papers and from here you'll be able to find your way down the well-lit rabbit hole. In 2016, the American Statistical Association published a statement on p-values. A link to this, the URL for this paper, as well as the other two papers which I'll introduce to you, can be found below this video. The first part of this statement shows the motivation and the purpose for the statement, followed by a few principles which I'll highlight. Now this debate has become quite serious and so serious that one journal decided, the Journal of Basic and Applied Social Psychology, decided to ban p-values all along. Now let's get into the nuances of this debate. So the principles stated in this um, statement are firstly, p-values can indicate how compatible the data are with a specific statistical model. And I'll definitely recommend that you read the full paper and all three papers. They are valuable and they will give you lots of insights and a good place to start. Principle two is the p-values do not measure the probability that the studied hypothesis is true or the probability that the data were produced by random chance alone. Researchers often wish to turn a p-value into a statement about truth of a null hypothesis or about the probability that random chance produced the observed data. The p-value is neither. Principle 3. Scientific conclusions or, and business or policy decisions should not be based only on whether a p-value passes a specific threshold. Practices that reduce data analysis or scientific inference to me mechanical bright line rules, such as p less than 0.05, for justifying scientific claims or conclusions can lead to erroneous beliefs or poor decision making. A conclusion does not immediately become true on the one side of the divide and false on the other. The widespread use of statistical significance generally interpreted as p less or equal to 0.05 as a license for making a claim of a scientific finding or an implied truth leads to considerable distortion of the scientific process. Then principle four, proper inference requires full reporting and transparency. That is valuable. And principle five, a p-value or statistical significance does not measure the size of an effect or the importance of the result. And principle six, by itself, a p-value does not provide a good measure of evidence regarding a model or hypothesis. Can you see how important it is to read the, the text and this full paper? Then, in January 2019, the journal The American Statistician dedicated a special edition towards hypothesis testing. And this is the editorial, Moving to a World Beyond P Less Than 0.05. I'm going to just highlight a few important points in this article. And again, please read the full article. Don't base your conclusion solely on whether an association or effect was found to be statistically significant, i.e. the p-value passed some arbitrary threshold such as p less than 0.05. Don't believe that an association or effect exists just because it was statistically significant. Don't believe that an association or effect is absent just because it was not statistically significant. Don't believe that your p-value gives the probability that chance alone produced the observed association or effect or the probability that your hypothesis is true. Don't conclude anything about scientific or practical importance based on statistical significance or the lack thereof. And then they describe the papers in this issue propose many new ideas. Ideas in our determination as editors merited publication to enable broader consideration and debate. And this world of beyond P less than 0.05, this is a world where researchers are free to treat P equals 0.051 and P equals 0.049 as being categorically, not, as not being categorically different. 
where authors no longer find themselves constrained to collectively publish their results based on a single magic number. In this world, where studies with be less than 0.05 and studies with more than 0.05 are not automatically in conflict, researchers will see their results more easily replicated and even when not, they will better understand why. Isn't this valuable? So I'm just highlighting a few extra phrases and paragraphs here. It is time to stop using the term statistically significant entirely. Nor should variants such as statistically different, p less than 0.05, and non-significant survive, whether expressed in words, by asterisks, in a table, or in some other way. And again, a better explanation follows if you read the full paper. Furthermore, the false split into worthy and unworthy results lead to selective reporting and publishing of results based on statistical significance, the so-called file draw problem. And we know that this is a problem. But there are many do's, and in the many of the papers published in this special edition, you'll find suggest suggestions on how to treat the data. And even in this editorial, they go on to make some recommendations. We summarize our recommendation in two sentences, totaling seven words. Accept uncertainty, be thoughtful, open, and modest. Atom. And they go on to explain these principles. Then there's one more paper which I think will be a good start to familiarizing yourself with this debate. Five non-obvious changes in editorial practice for editors and reviewers to consider when evaluating submissions in a post P less than 0.05 universe. This paper gives guidance as to how we should put, move to a world beyond P less than 0.05 and apply this world to our papers. Again, it's a valuable paper to read to get some insight into this whole debate. I hope this video helped and I hope it gives you a good start as to how to find your way through this well-lit rabbit hole. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.